guess where I am? I'll give you a massive clue. Check this tree out. I can only be in one of two countries. Which one is it? It is, of course, Namibia. And this here is the quiver tree. How's it, guys? I'm Gus, the African plant hunter. Welcome to the National Botanical Research Institute in Windhoek, Namibia. I'm doing some work here in Namibia and I thought I'd just take a few moments out to come and check out their magnificent botanical garden because to me this is botanic heaven. This tree here, it's an aloe, the quiver tree. Uh, Kokoboom, as it's called, excuse my terrible Afrikaans pronunciation. And it's called the quiver tree because, oh, let me give you the Latin name. So, aloe or aloe dendron uh, dichotomum. And it's called the quiver tree because the San, who call it Choye, they traditionally use the hollowed out branches as quivers for their arrows. They use it for a lot of other things, I'll tell you some of those later. Dicotomum, as its Latin name uh, suggests, relates to its very distinctive uh, characteristic of this bifurcating stem. So you can see this one stem comes out here, splits into two, splits into two, splits into two, splits into two, and so it goes on up and up and up the tree. And then at the end, on the top, uh, you've got this very, very distinctive overall uh, impression with the leaves up there on the top of each stem as it comes up. You can also tell a quiver tree straight away by the bark, the kind of silvery yellowy bark. Uh, it's this color because it needs to reflect the sunlight away from it because it's, this grows and is adapted to very harsh, very hot, very dry environments. Uh, and it needs to protect itself from the fierce glare of the sun, which it does with this bark. But be careful because even though the flaky bark might look like it's kind of soft, it's actually razor sharp on these edges. Uh, so warning there. Another nice traditional use of this, once the tree dies, it lives to about 80 years old, so not a very long lived tree, but then it is an aloe, so, uh, and, it, and once it's died, the San have traditionally hollowed out the inside and then put food for storage inside the stem because this sort of fibrous bark allows some air to pass through which has a cooling effect inside so it's kind of uh, nature's refrigerator uh, the san of course are incredible in their knowledge and ability of traditional plant uses uh, that's not one that many of us might necessarily have thought of but it is one that they widely use so I'm just so happy to have an opportunity to see this. Uh, they're pretty rare. There's a couple of places where there are uh, natural spontaneous forests of them. One in South Africa, one in Namibia. Uh, I have not ever been to either of those. Absolutely can't wait to do that. Uh, for now, I'm just very happy to see one here. There's actually quite a few here in the Botanical Garden. Not native to this area, a bit further south in Namibia, um, but they're doing all right here and it's just really beautiful to see them. So, if you've never been to Namibia before, can I just say what an extraordinary and magnificent country it is on many, many levels. Uh, but from a botanical point of view, it's just a, such a wonderland and I absolutely love being here. All right, guys, I've got to go and fuel my excitement by having a look at some of these other plants around here. I thought I'd show you the quiver tree. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, there's plenty more on my YouTube channel, Facebook and Instagram. Just check out African Plant Hunter. If you like what I do and you'd like to support me, you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash African Plant Hunter. I'd really appreciate that. It helps me make these videos. All right, guys, I will catch you later. Take it easy. Bye. Thank you.